Behind the Scenes podcast, the very first episode, I want to introduce somebody very special to you, somebody who is devastatingly handsome, somebody who is incredibly talented, somebody who has done incredibly sensational work, but more than anything, somebody who has um, real social change in mind, somebody who's done, who's been a, a producer, somebody who's been a director, somebody who's been a photographer, somebody who's been a videographer, somebody who's done incredible work um, all around in all areas of his life. So um, before I give him a chance to speak, I just want to say that his work has um, really inspired me in many ways, not only social media, but just his editing skills and all around ability to, to um, create all sorts of content. And even though he has, he may have clients, um, the work that he does in general just speaks to the culture of today. So I want to introduce to you Emmanuel Rodriguez, AKA Superman. <laughs> Superman, how you doing? Brother? Thanks so much for having me. Oh, no. To be here. no, no, please. Um, that was really too much of an introduction, I feel. <laughs> Well, that's the point. The point is to make you gush, and the point is to make you, uh, you know, feel like you're um, ready for, for this level, you know, for, for whatever is going on in your life now. Um, so I wanted to like just get right right off the bat. You posted something earlier today. Um, it was the uh, the, the uh, documentary. Yes. Yeah, and um, what was the name of it? Pop Earth. Pop so, Earth. Yeah, so, Pop Earth. and it, it had something to do with autism and children struggling with autism. Mm -hmm. um, it's fascinating to me because I, I have I go to a church and there's a, a lot of kids there that have autism. So it really kind of struck a chord with me, and it was really cool. So I wanted to kind of talk talk about how that came up. I know you di you directed it, and uh, Anthony mm -hmm. Delgado uh, produced it. Yes. Can you talk to me a little bit about it, like how yeah. that came to be? <laughs> so um, actually, yeah. So the organization is called Pop Earth. Yeah. It's um, founded in 2012 by Debbie Stone. Um, she's actually a really really close friend of Anthony Delgado's. Awesome. So. You know, they've always been back and forth, helping out, you know, different organizations, different types of uh, business and personal life. Right. Um, so what came out now is that every year she always has like, um, like a huge fundraiser, barbecue, extravaganza, Dope. where top New York chefs come out and they cook food for all the people. Um, great talent comes out to support the cause. Um, so all types of, you know, personal and business people come out together to help out the autistic community. So right. what's amazing about this organization is that, first of all, it was the first in the country mm -hmm. to offer all these different types of holistic services. Right. Um, and the reason it's important is because, like even I didn't know, I was moved when I was able to go to all the different locations mm -hmm. um, and meet the different individuals and the teachers and everybody who's like hands on working with the autistic children. Because I didn't know that after the age of 20, or basically once they enter adulthood, they're pretty much cut off. Nothing. Though. Yeah, they're just yeah. cut off and it's like, do it and right. good luck. Yeah, and, and it, that part is crazy to me because like I, I see these kids at different stages in their life, right? Growing up and you know, even as they reach their teens, it almost becomes a stigma to be around them. Mm -hmm. You know, because they, that they become kind of hard to manage at that age. And I uh, volunteered at a, a place where there's a lot of autistic kids when I was maybe in high school. And I, I helped take care of one kid who was around 17, 18 years old. And he was still considered a kid at that age. But then the next year, that's where the program ends. Yeah. So to your point, that's where things get, that's where that's where they're like full-blown adults. So it becomes really difficult to uh, to kind of find out what's next. So to your point, that's mm -hmm. that's where it gets really difficult. So basically, yeah, so um, what happened is this year, one of, uh, she's actually the executive director of Hopper. She, wants, she reached out to us because she wanted to make the documentary and actually the founder and CEO they had no idea what was going on. Oh no way. Because she's technically been working by herself since 2012, trying to set up the program and everything. Right. And just been grinding and working hard, but right. she never really saw how much of an impact she's been causing right. you know, to the community. So, so there, there's a couple things that I want to go through with you. First of all, the process of it. Second of all, um, the, the filming and the editing side of it, but then really what I want to go through with you is the, the creative aspect of what you do, because I feel like this podcast specifically is, is more for content creators and creative people, and then what they actually do in the industry, because I feel like it can get really confusing for people, like, what do you even do for a living? Yeah, you know, you ever get that question? Yeah. <laughs> Sitting around the Thanksgiving table, is like people are like, well, what is it exactly that you do, and how do I hire you? Do you do photography? Do you do wedding photography? Do you do 
I don't know, do you do um, children's baptisms? You know, <laughs> and people will give you these random questions. And it's like, I want to kind of get down to the root of that. So um, uh, in the popper thing, what was your creative process, like the creative involvement? Okay, so uh, that was a good one. <laughs> yeah. So basically it was, I mean, the idea was presented to show a video that would kind of lapse out the whole time the pop earth organization existed and show how much of an impact personally from every individual, whether it be the parent, the teacher, or the student and child themselves. And so when they came to you to do that, was it like, listen, we need you specifically to do a video, or was it more like, um, listen, we want to encapsulate this idea, we don't know how to do it, and you were like, why don't we do a video? In this case, it was specifically a video. They knew they wanted to do a video, they didn't know how it was going to come out. Mm. And the reason was because some type of video was going to be presented on large screen at the event. Mm. But they didn't want it to just be a cheesy, these are our sponsors, right. some pictures, and right. this is a us. corporate video with a white background. Yeah, exactly, with a white background, <laughs> and everybody's just <laughs> smiling at each other. Yeah. We, are cor we are a corporate sponsor, you know, like, this is Pop Earth, you know, yeah. call us here, this is our website. Yeah, that's exactly right. what they, 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 they didn't, didn't want. want. They wanted a more human approach. Right, it. and it, it, it looks that way, man. It, 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 it pulls at the heartstrings. It's really great. It's really great. And Thank you. go check it out, Superman on Instagram, and he has it right there on IGTV, which is you know, exactly what it is. But um, no, it's it's really awesome the way it comes out. It does look, uh, it is an emotional video, and that's what I like about it. Um, but I want to move into who you are as a creative because I feel like that's really important, and it's a really really unique time that we're in in the industry because uh, you know you can do that. You can be a creative, but you can still be a business person, and I feel like that's a unique time with people like D Rock and the Gary V's of the world. You know, you can have that kind of creative side to you, but then you can also be very about your business. Can you speak a little bit to that and kind sure. of like where you're at in that, in that So, um, it's funny, starting out, I'm mainly a photographer. Yeah. Um, that's, you know, my passion, that's how I started. And slowly but surely, I was led into video creation and it was kind of like one day to the next. It was just like, you know, photo is great, but video is the next wave, so... Let's jump into it. I feel like everybody gets pushed into video. Yeah, yeah that's that's kind of what happened. I mean, it was, it was funny because when I was younger, before I even thought of myself as like a creative or anything, I was just like grabbing just video files off of YouTube and like splicing it up and adding my own music. And it was just kind of like something I'd liked because right. I guess I liked whatever I was creating and I didn't think of nothing of it. So I guess that helped nowadays. You know? uh, so how do you make that transition? How do you go from getting paid for photography to getting paid for video? Um, the transition was, it was a little tricky, but it was more tricky just in my mindset because as a creative, we usually get stuck on identity. Right. You know, as a creative, right. no, I'm just this, I'm just a portrait photographer. You, you internalize just, your art and it becomes your identity. Yeah, right. so a lot of times it's like, it becomes so much of a part of you that you get offended if somebody calls you something else. Mm -hmm. You know, like if you're a product photographer or like commercial photographer, like wow. you're not just a picture taker, you know, like you better address me correctly, you know what I mean? Like, so it gets to a point. Right. So um, that's usually what happens, but for me it was just like, I make people happy with what I create. Wow. So if it's photo, if it's video, if, if that's what they want, if they want a PDF, you know, <laughs> That's what I create, so wow. I just try to encompass everything. That's really good because I feel like a lot of times we don't want to address certain, solve certain problems for our clients because it doesn't fall into our identity. Exactly. You know, like, so like I, I started as a graphic designer, I had to switch to social media and, and video because those are the problems that needed to be solved. But I was like, man, I don't want to just be a graphic designer. But I also don't want to be a videographer, so you need to address me as something specific in order for me to solve that problem. And that that holds a lot of people back. It held me back for a long time. You know, so that that's really interesting for you to say that. But so all right, so you're making the transition from photo to video, and what happens? Do you find pe that people want that uh, a lot from you more as a videographer? You want that they want your service, or do you find that like okay, now I want to make that leap into video, and I'm like. There's nobody that wants my video. Well, yeah, I mean, well, the main thing is right now is video is, is everything. Right. You know, even Gary spoke about it a thousand times. Right. It's like in a few years, I'm 
Facebook, all content is going to be video. Instagram just launched IGTV, which means that they're focusing on video. Yeah, right. You know, long form. And Instagram was just, it's a photo sharing site. Yeah. So for them to launch a completely separate, just video <laughs> yeah, platform yeah, yeah. shows like, you know, what the future is holding. So, yeah. Um, so definitely, yeah, the clients now, they, I've been contacted more just for them seeing the video work. Mm. And then through that, I was able to give a video and photo package to make it interesting. That's, that's really smart. Um, so then what's kind of the next play for you as far as like the creativity aspect? Because obviously you're going to have people from all sorts of companies and stuff you know, that want your video. How do you narrow down who you want to work with? Is it a pricing thing or is it a, a passion thing? All right. Well, I mean, that's also another question that, <laughs> yeah, because again, as a, you know, as a creator and in the industry, we always, we always want our passion to shine. Right. Um, but then we also have bills to pay. Right. So I think you definitely have to find a niche between the two. Mm. Because I've seen people, you know, even myself, I'll pick up work because I'm just like, oh, I need an extra hundred bucks. But then I don't give it my hundred percent because I'm not for it. It's kind of like not my thing, mm. but the client reached out to me, so I needed the business. Right, right, right. Um, I definitely feel that's not the route that we have to go. Right. So like now working directly with um, with this job, what we're trying to do is bring diversity to tech, mm. whether it's uh, coding, videography, um, any type of technology that's working now. So basically our passion is to help those communities which A, aren't getting the right um, attention or media coverage that are needed. Interesting. And yeah, so pretty much. So what exactly, how exactly do you go about doing that? So let's say there's a company um, that needs you guys. What What is it, what are the, requirements for that company in order for you guys to be a good match so vibe that first thing vibe. is vibe yeah definitely meeting first with the client if i think you want to work with this rug <laughs> get a good vibe have yeah a yeah because they definitely has to be um, um i wouldn't say like our style is not too much corporate okay um but there are corporate people that handle the you know the social media aspect and the video content right and if we can vibe good with them okay. <laughs> then you know, it can flow, but the most important thing is what kind of message is the company giving? If the company is just trying to that's a great, sell a product that's and a just, great you know, be, oh, this is us and this is what you need and we're the best just because we are, mm. that kind of is not the stuff we go for. Right, right, right. You know, right, which is important because I feel like um, one of my business partners, um, Abe Sharkis, he, he told me um, that if you don't align with the, with the values of the brand that you're trying to work with, then down the road, it's gonna actually cause a lot of friction for you mm -hmm. because it, it's kind of like a stress thing over money. Yeah, you know, like it, it's gonna just cause you to stress out about the about what you're doing. Every little project, every little um, edit, every little phone call. It's just like you have to weigh that over the over the value of what you're getting paid from the client. Yeah. So I mean, that that's perfect. That's a perfect requirement for you guys. Um, so okay, so what exactly are you doing within Disrupt? So within this job, so my title is the creative director. Awesome. Um, I still see myself as the video guy. <laughs> the video guy. <laughs> you know, but um, no, but basically, so the main thing is um, obviously between building up the personal brand and then also working with the clients. Yeah. Um, my big role is making sure that the content is getting created, yeah, obviously, yeah, yeah. right, and getting put out with the right image and obviously on time. Okay. Because once content becomes irrelevant, it's like... You should be my creative director then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the content you put out on time. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, struggle, I still struggle a lot with that, but it's, you know, it's it's important to have, uh, to have things set out and a goal to, right. to push it out. I love it, man. I love it. It's very cool. Um, yeah, I mean, one of the main things that I, I think is a big question in the industry is um, creativity. You know, how creative can you get versus how how far can business go? You know, so what are your opinions as, as far as like how much are you supposed to push the envelope create creatively versus how effective does it need to be for marketing? Okay. Um, for this one, I'm actually gonna quote somebody I learned a lot from, which is Chris Doe from the future. I love Chris Doe. Yeah, so like, he's, he's the man. Binge watch Chris This guy is, he's actually taught me a lot. Um, and the two things that he goes for when it comes to creativity mm -hmm. is a lot of times we get stuck on 
I want to create what I want to create because it's original and it's me and it's purposeful. But when we get caught up in that, mm. then it becomes a conflict of interest. Right. So you have to understand that even though something is not 100% original, but you did create it, so it is original. Right. And just take it for what it is. Mm. Like um, even something that I that I had to like step across and like find myself is like even like the use of like you know templates or things I would like pre formatted because right. a lot of times we're like oh no but I want to create it from scratch <laughs> but to be an effective creator you have to like think about the cars every car company made their own wheel for their cars <laughs> that's you know, a, it wouldn't make a, sense that's a great metaphor yeah, yeah yeah so just use what's already created add it and then just make your product better and then put your your flow on it yeah. so so then do you do you think that like even even down to like those little After Effects um, pre-made, um, what, what, uh, those little pre-made kind of things that come mm -hmm. up on the screen. Do you think those are totally viable or pre-made flyers, let's say for clients, stuff like that? If you're posting on, on social media for them, yeah, definitely. I mean, I wouldn't say just uh, take it exactly as it is and then right. just kind of like, all right, that's what it is. Obviously, you have to tweak it, you right. know, to your style, to your liking, the colors, um, maybe or the of websites from there. India. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> you know, but the, but the most important thing is that a lot of times we get caught up in the creation process that we never finish a product Interesting. or it doesn't get pushed out on time because I want to create it from scratch or I want it to be me. You right, know? right, right. But that's, I think that's where a lot of times we're in the creative industry, a lot of people like, I don't want to say fail, but they get held back uh, okay. because first of all, they want to be the only ones doing everything from start to finish. Mm. And then once somebody says something about it or critiques it, it's like, a war, right? right. Now, you know, because right. it's like you're offending me personally. Like it's my work. It's me. You know? <laughs> right, right. Which I've I've been the the number one like um, I guess victim of that. You know, where it's like this is my work, and when I put it out, and somebody says, "Well, I mean that that could be a little darker or something." It's like you're you're insulting my identity. Yeah. You know, but which I've I've learned to kind of come around to that. It's like they're not insulting me. It's just like that's literally theirs. They pay for it. It's the clients. Yeah. And so I've, I've had to change my perspective on that big time, but um, you know, I, I I agree with you. You know, I think you have to utilize the tools that have been given to you. Why? Another thing that my business partner said: Why reinvent the wheel over and over again? Yeah. You know, if it's there, if you can purchase it, if you can go to Google it and and freaking buy a new font, why wouldn't you just use it? Exactly. You know, it's not like you're redrawing every letter every time you're gonna you know buy a new yeah, font. Yeah, or something. exactly. You know, it doesn't so, make sense. Yeah, it doesn't make any <laughs> sense. Yeah. So I mean, there are purists. They're yeah. purists that will literally create their own fonts, create code their own websites every single time. Mm -hmm. But I mean, if that's not your specialty, why not utilize somebody else's specialty? Yeah. Especially if it's not, I mean, yeah, if you're working on a personal project, right. that's just for you and you want to show it to the world, like, yeah, take all the time you want and right. create it from scratch. But if you're trying to push out content that's relevant to the people, relevant to the time, right. relevant to your client, right. you need to learn how to cook for them, how to save time, Streamline. and still push out like a premium product. Very true. Uh, uh, I think I'm gonna ask this to every other guest. I'm not sure, but I'll start with you. Mm -hmm. And, uh, all right. So imagine yourself at the Thanksgiving table or anywhere that people don't know anything about what you do. They just know you as a person. Um, and I alluded to this earlier, mm -hmm. but um, if you had to kind of describe yourself very briefly, what do you do for a living? I would actually call myself more than anything a business consultant because in order to work with, of course, I create things, but that's just part of the business aspect. That's just how I get things done. Right. But all in all, whenever I speak to a client, I'm trying to figure out what problems do they have and then how can I solve it to make their revenue grow or their or whatever their their reach is, you know, it is just to get more followers, to get more clients, um, to spread a message, you know, whether it's like a, something nonprofit. Right. Um, so that's the first thing is try to find out, okay, what is it that, you, what's your end goal? Right. What's stopping you from getting there? And then what do I need to do to make sure you get there? I love that. So See. I would have been like, well, I do social media and video. Yeah, exactly. I'm changing it up. Start throwing all these like fancy yeah. things. Yeah. I'm changing it up now. I'm a business consultant. Yeah, I'm going to exactly. help you. Here's my card. I work on Wall Street. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, that's great. I'm going to start wearing suits. 
<laughs> I love it. Well, I mean, I think that's going to be my seal, my, my closing question, and um, it will start to formulate more. And as the podcast develops and as it gets bigger, I'll definitely have you back on, and um, you're going to come, you're going to return when it's at the top, at the top of the <laughs> iTunes charts, at the top of everything, you know. But dude, thank you seriously, man. Oh, you know, so much you know, fun. you know, we're already working together. You know, we're already in a, in a project together. This is our second project together, and you know, we've been connecting. So it's seriously awesome to have you on the podcast and discuss what's going on in the industry. Yeah. So um, no, it's really awesome, and this means a lot. So um, you know, behind the scenes podcast. My name is Angel Kiros. Uh, this is Manny Rodriguez, <laughs> aka Super Manny, and. Um, I hope I said his name right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Check out this link below. I don't know what it's gonna be yet, but I'm gonna put a link here. Something there. Yeah, there's gonna be something there. And uh, love you guys for watching. Peace. Thanks so much, dude. Thanks. <laughs>